So uh, this is uh, part of a program called the Strategic Sector Cooperation SSC, uh, with uh, where I might add the DEPA, the Danish Environmental Protection Agency, and uh, financed by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Denmark, and uh, in cooperation with various countries uh, on uh, our border program, climate adaptation and circular economy. So for the water where I'm engaged, we have Ethiopia, Morocco, Kenya, South Africa, Ukraine, and India, where we uh, try to help mainly identify an aquifers. We also have a department in a circular economy in Indonesia, Kenya, and Thailand. And a circular economy is just like a, a new word for recycling. So this uh, presentation is uh, from our experiences uh, working in intensive passion in uh, Morocco and for two areas in Ethiopia, uh, Havasa and Jirdawa. And as we'll see, there are quite some uh, uh, different changes well, in approach uh, against the two countries. So what we essentially want to do is to do uh, a hydrogeological modeling. Uh, so the work process is also also in, in our Danish uh, project when we met the groundwater in Denmark, uh, also in Africa, we start with the data. So what kind of data do we have? So we are looking at the boreholes, chemistry, geophysics, et cetera. We have these uh, overview of the data. We start just to build up a geological model and understanding of the geological area. We transfer that uh, data to a hydrogeological model and Essentially, we get some groundwater aquifers out where we can do some vulnerability assessment. That's like the complete uh, process uh, from start to the beginning. Currently, we are through the data setup of Morocco and Ethiopia, and we're starting with the geological model. So, evaluation of uh, current data, due data always uh, something we have to do and it's uh, may look easy but it's uh, places in Africa very very hard to gather this information so we will look at uh, the data available uh, our interest is for all, all sorts of physics geophysics geological hydrogeologic maps all data that uh, that we can use then we have a uh, a lot of uh, work also on the different formats. Uh, a lot of the data is actually only stored in paper. Uh, it's not uh, in the digital formats. Uh, we have PDFs, Word documents with tables we have to extract data from. These are all existing data. And uh, if you're lucky, you can get Excel files, but you still need to do a lot of formatting. And that uh, goes on in the structure where we like to structure the data and uh, look at uh, putting it into a, a database. And this is uh, uh, always uh, a work that's kind of hard to estimate on time. It, uh, usually it's a long time to get a complete overview of the new data in the area. So uh, in Ethiopia, we uh, had uh, the hard copy versus uh, soft copy. Uh, I was uh, at a meeting and I was starting to gather data and uh, I was asking, do you have data? They said, yes, we have a lot. And then this old man, he walked over and he opened up a shelf and they had these paper reports. <laughs> that was... Uh, so we had to start to uh, scan and take pictures and... And uh, when we were lucky having digital data, it was, of course, uh, uh, unstructured. Uh, if you had want to have data in Excel, it's a good idea to have it uh, structured as a table. Uh, but these Excel uh, formats were like for good looking, and that's, that's not good for a database. And then uh, there's a new federal project on, uh, on the database server that we also had to look into to see if we were able to, to, to get our data in there. So 
the current uh, work is, of course, extracting the data and structuring it and, and making it digital if it's not, and then centralize it in a single uh, file-based database. And these are from our Ethiopia experience. And file-based database is because uh, we want to keep it simple. We don't want to come with, with a Red Hat server and a post-GIS. Uh, it's way too complicated. So the technologies and uh, implementation is uh, geo packages for Ethiopia. It's very practical. Uh, you have a work day with uh, power failures and internet is gone. You need to have everything local. So uh, a geo package uh, could uh, just be on a USB stick and uh, you can have all your data there. It's easy to back up. Uh, in Morocco, they are a bit uh, further in the process, so they have jumped over to the post-GIS installation running on the server. And then we use uh, GIS for, for the GIS stuff. And uh, it's also... Uh, everybody uh, we experience, they use GIS, but it's hacked versions, of course. So you have to uh, really uh, persuade them to use GDS because they have the ArcGIS and they don't pay for it. Uh, here's our, an example of uh, how we uh, visualize uh, boreholes. This is in Morocco, the Atlas Mountains out to the Atlantic, where we uh, made a GDS geometry generator. Uh, I'll show you how, uh, just to get uh, the boreholes on the map. And this is a, a very good uh, tool for visualizing uh, subversive geology. And uh, how was it done? Uh, this table is joined from uh, several sources, but you have uh, an ID. These are layers. So uh, this uh, borehole here has uh, six layers. So you have a, a top and a bottom in meters. So the top layer is from the surface to one meter below surface. And you have a lithology tile, that's the kind of rock you have, and a color. And these, uh, this data is joined, so it's not normalized. And usually, I mean, uh, these two columns, they tell you the same, so you can move that out in a separate lithology table. Then we uh, add a geometry rater, just a single simple, and uh, tell it to make a line with a geometry and then use the top and bottom column, and you get uh, the borehole drawn. And this is a, a very, very fast uh, technique. Uh, in Denmark, we have done it on the 400,000 boreholes, and with the uh, lithologies, there will be two to three million records you render really fast. The next step is to win the geometry rater to uh, take the line and uh, data bind it to the color column. So you get the color of the lithology in your borehole. Uh, this is uh, generated with the elevation profile tool in uh, GIS. And uh, we saw the picture before with the borehole's, and we have a profile section and we have a buffer. We can uh, decide how the width of the buffer uh, to include how far away we want the balls to join in on the profile. And this uh, relative uh, new uh, profile window is uh, actually really, really good. It's also good for soft versus uh, geology. The elevation profile window is built uh, with the same tools that uh, generating the 2D map in QDIS. So this means that all your styling from your from your map gets inherited. Well, you don't need to work. The styling also goes in. So, uh, and we have a, like a, a, this is more like a proof of concept for the, the 3D uh, stuff in QGIS, not really a, uh, yet minded to, to our kind of data. We want to data bind everything. So we want all the, the setup of the scene to be read from tables, to be read from our data. And it's uh, the, 
the data binding capabilities is not that advanced yet in the in the 3D window on ChipGIS. But uh, we uh, we'll manage to uh, to draw the boreholes uh, underneath uh, an elevation model. So also included in the SSC work uh, in the countries around the world is uh, is uh, three main factors. We do a lot of uh, capacity building, teaching, and uh, building guidelines for the locals. So our hope is that uh, when we leave the project, they just won't close it down, but it will keep existing for years to come. That's very important for us. And that's why we, uh, we would like to keep it simple. We have, of course, uh, there are key employees in the locals and uh, they may uh, get a new job and, uh, and then everything is lost. So it has to be uh, simple, just like uh, the local water distribution can be very simple. Yeah. And it's uh, besides the electricity pole, this could be uh, an image from the time of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a nice presentation about your experience of your two mm -hmm. different countries. Uh, I'm sure there will be some of the questions. Any questions? Yes, please. I have a technical question for the screen. Do you come back? Yes. yes. All right. So this is in all. Uh, can you see French here? French, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, is, is there is a ability to show more of the English in English there? Oh, it's just for the no, no, I have no Yeah, yeah. The, the groundwater, uh, will be added to, uh, to the elevation profiles here. Now, this is very much uh, height exaggerated, uh, but you can map the, the, the groundwater level in the elevation profile. And if you need to get it in the, the 3D view, you will have to do some uh, tricks. It's not out of the box. Yeah. But uh, essentially, we are looking into developing further on this elevation profiles because now we need to also be able to, to build our model from here. And then may say the uh, this uh, layer boundary here would be uh, the same as this layer boundary, and it will go up here. So we can actually catch a click event on the elevation profile and then build our model within this 2D window. Yes. The other proprietary software we use for geological model also has the same approach, like you build your model from the elevation profile. Yes, because then you will need, of course, to interpolate uh, a surface. Yes, and then you can get that surface on also. And uh, it, you can not only show the surface, but also in the elevation profile, you can uh, mark uh, a complete layer with a color uh, if you have the top and bottom the layer. And actually, this is a, I think this is a very advanced tool because it will also show you any vectors. So if you have any contours or roads or whatever, they will also show up here in the profile window. Yeah, so I, the profile is my preferred tool compared to the 3D window. That's more like something new. Much to do here with the, the, the buffer base, but that's nice to do. So, if we're in a certain distance, I want my data, the measurement of the flood, it's aware. Yeah, nothing here to do. Yes, and it, 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 it works just out of the box. You, you change the buffer size and it will just dynamically turn the uh, boreholes on and off. Yeah. Um, what kind of uh, operation has to work with the something, uh, something simple? Inverse distance weighting, or in the beginning maybe no interpolation, just connecting the points. 
uh, because then uh, some of the interpolations, they have artifacts and can cheat you. Uh, sometimes we also use creaking, but then we need a lot of data and we need to have control of the data. So this, uh, actually, you need to also to put your interpretation points in here so they get used in the interpolation. Yeah, but uh, in Denmark, we used uh, inverse distance weighting and creaking. Yeah. Yes, many points, yes. And and then like in this case, I think it will be uh, best in the first, just to connect the points, just connect them, no interpolation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The, well, the, 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 the groundwater comes out of the hydrological model, yes, and uh, this is just like uh, uh, what it could be the the top of the of the groundwater uh, aquifer. So it's just a raster file we'll put in, and then gets it drawn. Yeah. Question in the back, and then I'll come to you. Yes, uh, how did you set up your table from the original data? Did you all set it down by hand, or did you have any processes? That's how we change the raw data. Do you mean this table? Yeah. Uh, in in uh, when you work with these kinds of data, you have uh, like uh, you have a table with your boreholes. Yes, and then you have a table with your lithologies, that is your, your rock types, yeah. And these are actually two tables, and uh, they are joined together here. So in the lithology table, I just have an ID of the borehole, and then I have the top and bottom and the lithology. So this is like a joint from three tables to build this one. Uh, it's uh, just uh, it's in a, a geo package, yeah. Well, whatever format you you can use Excel, of course, also. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean by local? The local stakeholders who are really waiting for our Yes, yes. And you know, yeah. expect them to collect data for your projects? Or yes. Are you doing it all? No, I, they, they yeah, should do it. What? Okay. It's the. We have uh, people at the embassy uh, locally, both in Ethiopia and in Morocco, and they are good at. Uh, at uh, getting in touch with the locals because there's uh, what I sometimes will call a communication problem. Uh, they don't want to use emails at all, they use WhatsApp. And if they're going to send your data, they're going to send your SIF file on WhatsApp. And it's, uh, it's sort of primitive for me, but that's just the way it is. But it's important for them to uh, also to join in on the work so they get like a responsibility and feeling for it and also when it's spent uh, at the end results. So it's very important, but it's, uh, it's a test to get them in models. Yes, you are not experts in GIS. And mm -hmm. I, I'm just asking if you're, well, if you're well, uh, we are uh, Well, we are in the, the main capital at this upper army work with the Ministry of Water and Energy, and they have a technical experts in GIS. And also, actually, our local in the water utilities and the regional water bureaus, they have a GIS expertise. Yeah. So it's not completely from scratch. Thanks for these uh, insights in your uh, projects. Um, all speakers are just present, the organizers. You're also my applause for the interpretation.